Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Boxing TV. I'm your host, uh, boxing commentator Dan Hewitt, the owner of Boxing TV. Always like to start by saying thank you to every single person out there who follows the content every day. Some of you love it, some of you might think it's a meh, and some of you might hate it, but let's be honest, it's entertaining. It is. I thank you so much for joining. Linda, I hope you're well. Linda Platt, great to see you. Um, lovely, lovely lady. She is an absolute legend in boxing and herself. She's she's a, a photographer. Um, lovely, lovely lady. So great to see um, such a, a fantastic lady. Um, Neil, Neil Smith. Nice to see you, mate. We had Jimmy, one of uh, his um, family members on last week. Now, this week, for everybody um, who's, who's joining, make sure you keep all your comments coming in. Everybody watching, make sure you like. Make sure you uh, subscribe if you're on YouTube. And if it is that you're on Facebook, make sure you leave a like for me. I'm going to be giving it again away a prize a little bit later on in the stream. Um, so like, share, share away, and I'll be picking a winner at the end. Now, I've got two of the most exciting talents in Britain right now that are going to be coming on the show a little bit later. Both of them are 5 and 0. Oh. But I've also been going to be bringing on the living legend himself, Mr. James Lights Out Tony. Now, if you don't know who James Lights, Lights Out Tony is, you are literally on the moon. James is a very good friend of mine. We've known each other a very long time. I love the guy. I think he's an incredible fighter. He's adorable. He's just the most lovely bloke, brilliant father. Um, but most of all, an absolutely unbelievable fighter. Um, and a little bit later on, we're going to be speaking with Janaid Bostan, who's 5-0 and with five knockouts. A very exciting fighter. He's uh, signed with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom. And a little bit later, um, sorry, after, we're going to be speaking to Macaulay Owen, who's also 5-0, and who's, who's going to be fighting next Saturday um, on the 25th of March in Telford um, on the on Nathan Heaney, Jack Flatley undercard. So first of all, thanks for joining. Hit that like button and let's speak to the legend himself, Mr. James Stone. How are you, mate? How are you getting hey, on? Hey, what's going on, man? Been too long, bro. Been too long. Yeah. Well, about five days. <laughs> <laughs> Do me a favor, James. Just put your phone on the side, mate, so I can see you that way. I want to see the beautiful face. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Make sure you keep your comments coming in. It's not very often, really, in your life that you get to ask someone with this amount of prowess, someone with this amount of, call it fame, call it legendary status, whatever you might call it. You don't get to do it very often, if ever. So make sure you keep your comments coming in. Now, I sold <laughs> James. You love it, don't you? <laughs> Brilliant. Dean Beddows um, is coming in. James will be with us again in a sec. Dean Beddows coming in. Good evening. Fantastic. Dean, I want to say a big thank you to you as joining you, one of the partners at Boxing TV and Mitras. Um, really looking forward to announcing our partnership very, very soon. James, can you hear me? Can you see me okay, my friend? I hear you. I see you very well. Everybody must be after you, mate. Everybody must be after you. So uh, let's have a look who's got. We've got Culwa making. Let's go. Let's go, mate. Let's go. I want to see. I want to know where everybody's from. So make sure you comment where you're from. Now, James, going to yes. you. How you? How you been? How's life treating well, I'm you? I'm doing fabulous, man. I can't complain. Everything's good besides the weather. Take that. And I'm in California. They say it never rains in Southern California. They lied. The lion, yeah. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Now, James, I wrote, I told, said to you off camera there, uh, I want to thank you first of all. So I spoke to Janaid, who's coming on a little bit later, and Janaid is an unbelievable, an unbelievable prospect, fantastic amateur. And you've been sitting there in the background for the last 10 or 15 minutes, giving him, giving him advice on his career and giving him, and to tell you what, it was absolutely incredible to see. So thanks a lot for that, James. Much appreciated. Well, well, just to well, facilitate well. that. You know, you never know. I might be bringing on uh, some. Some fantastic, fantastic prospect there. We've got so let's have a look where they are, James. We've got Dundee, Scotland, first of all, James. Chris Harper, Chris, top man. Hope you're well. Um, we've got uh, York now living in Nairsborough, um, up in uh, in, y in Yorkshire in, in the UK. Um, we've got Linda, who's living in Sparks, Nevada, near Reno. Um, Lisa, whereby everyone's so from Stoke, and we've got Paul Driscoll who says, Hello, James Champion, how are you doing? How are you doing? Hey, hey tell us that alone, man. He loves you, bro. He loves you. Now, like I said to you a little bit earlier, James, I, I actually wrote two different sets of questions. One of them I didn't even realize that I did. Um, and then one of them I did on the way back from my holiday a little bit earlier on today. And one of them's like, 
a lot more pressing than the other. So I prefer just do the pressing one. But first of all, let, let's start from the beginning with what's going on in boxing right now, James. This All this influence of boxing, this Jake Paul, this Tommy Fury, KSI, all this celebrity boxing. Do you think it's good for the sport or not? You know, right, right now, it's good for the sport right now because ain't nobody, ain't nobody else is boxing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, all, all the big fights ain't being made, so this is the only thing that's pushing boxing, pu pushing boxing by. You know what I'm saying? I do, I do. And I've got to agree with you there. I mean, you look at the Errol Spence and Terence Crawford situation. Look at the Tyson Fury Joshua situation. Look at the Tyson Fury Usyk situation, which is happening now. James, in your honest opinion, we, at first you can almost... So, of course, Tyson Fury said to Joshua he had so many days in order to make this fight happen between the two. Yeah? It didn't end up happening. I almost blame Joshua. Now, though, Usyk has come out and said, yeah, he's called his bluff, apparently, and said he's going to take 70-30. Tyson Fury's now come back and said, do you know what? Um, I, you can't have a rematch clause either. What's going on, James? Do, do, and I'm asking this because I actually really oh, like Tyson oh, Fury. Is, is he avoiding this? He's avoiding, he's avoiding... Man, I don't know what it is. It, it's going around boxing so much. Everybody's scared to fight each other. I mean, Tyson Fury, well, I, I, I thought I was wrong about it, but I guess I'm not. He should be fighting. He's the heavyweight champion in the world. He should fight, defend the title against every, everybody. That's the way it should be. Like, like I did. Like Lance Lewis did. Like Joe Lewis did. Like Ali did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, look. Do you think he's avoiding you? Quit being scared to lose your championship. Do you think that's what it is? Do you think he's scared of losing the title? Do, do you feel he's fearful of, of Usyk? He shouldn't. He shouldn't because Usyk, Usyk, he all right. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a fighter, but he ain't nothing special. He shouldn't. I don't know you him. I mean, he's very good, isn't he? I mean, a lot of people keep saying how small he is and things like that. People don't. People got to bear in mind this guy's six foot three. This guy's not a small guy by any stretch of the imagination. So I don't think people should. Look into that so much. We're looking at a difference of around about six inches. Tyson Fury's six nine. He's six three. I mean, yeah, he's going to be smaller, but I mean, question question to you, James. Do you think that if you were in if you were in Tyson Fury's corner, how would sorry, Alexander Usyk's corner? How would you how would you prepare and what tactics would you use to beat Tyson Fury? The same way I beat uh, Jerov. Pressure, pressure, pressure bus pipes. So you feel pressure? A lot of people are saying going to the body. Going to the body is a big target. Obviously, That's the pressure, the pressure the body, then bring, and then bring, bring it right up the middle to hooks. I mean, with the uppercut and fit and fit the good old sweet nips hook. Do you feel, though, James, that, you know, with him being maybe probably going to be around about three stone lighter than him, you know, like what, what's that in yours? 28, I think it's about 42 pounds lighter than him probably on, on, on fight night. Do you think, can he put that kind of pressure on when Tyson Fury is going to be leaning? And, of course, you, the, the size of the guy's arms is, is huge. So do you feel he can do that? That way you learn how to move your head, bob and weave, you know what I'm saying? Be straight. You have, you, have the, you have the sound to do what you got to do to get inside. I mean, he's going to have to take some coming in. He's going to have to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, hey, there's no doubt about it. He's going to take some coming in, but, but still, you got to swim and slide. Get up under all the get up under all the Tiny Fury is tall. He's 6'9". He, if he if he, if he get out of sight, out of mind, he, 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 he's not going to be able to find you. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's one of the, I mean, you, with the whole Sugar Hill situation, you okay. must admit, he's, he has done well with him. He has done well with him. Sugar Hill, he, he knows the boxing. He knows boxing. He does. He does. Like, he, and he's been taught by the best, Emmanuel Stewart, no doubt about it. Yes, God rest sir. his soul. Yes, sir. But is that the right style for fighting Alexander Usyk, who is if, if, such, a, such a good footwork, using different angles? Is that... Oh, yeah. These power punching, all the right thing. All for Alexander Usyk, I only see him fight maybe two, three rounds. 
All you do is cut the ring over him in the rap. It's over with. It's interesting. Really, really is. Um, let's go to some of the fans, see what they've got to say. Uh, Dean Beddoe's here, top man. Um, Cheshire, but Telford, born and bred. A bit close to me. Linda said, uh, I agree with Lights Out. Tyson Fury should fight all comers. I mean, you're the main man. But I don't see why not, but obviously it's a business as well. Leslie Webb, evening, Dan. Evening, James. Question for James. What has been your most satisfying victory and why? I'm, I'm very, very... What's that? So Leslie Webb said, evening, Dan, evening, James. Question for James. What has been your most satisfying victory and why? Which which fight were you most satisfied with and why? Um, the Holyfield fight because everybody, thought, everybody said, I was too small to be heavyweight. I can't take heavyweight punch. Well, you know what? I, 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 I not only did that, I, I, went, I, went, I went above, above and beyond. Yeah, I made it look easy. It was. You did. I'm right thinking you stopped him in that fight. You yeah, I stopped him. I told I, I told him before the fight I was stopping. I mean, you don't easily stop Evander Holyfield. Well, I do. <laughs> I'll take that. I mean, Holyfield, let's get let's be honest, Holyfield was an absolute hey, great, warrior. Hey, great, hey, great fighter. I have him before the fight, I had all the respect in the world for him, but then we said talking to the press conference. I told my dad, I said, best off, I'm getting me. I mean, like I say, if you want to stop a Vander Holyfield, then you've got to be one hell of a fighter. So congratulations for that. Um, we've got loads of love coming in. Um, let's have a look here. Lou Louis Easter said, hey, champ, I'm from Telford in England. Loads of love coming in from Telford. Macaulay will be coming on shortly. Right, I want to talk about you and your your career and a few things I haven't asked you in the past um, that I'm interested to know. Um, and everybody watching, Make sure you drop a like and make sure you share. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and press the bell for notifications. On to you, though, James. So you went into MMA, didn't you, after boxing? Yeah, more fight. We, we, Absolutely. We're, we're, and you fought Randy Couture, um, yeah. who which, it didn't go your way, but let's be honest, you, you know, you were a you were a cat in a rabbit's cage. You, do you know what I mean? You, if that makes any sense. You, you Let's be honest, it's, it's not your first, it's not your main discipline. You can punch. There's no doubt about that. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that, James. I mean, what was the transition like? Was it harder than you thought? Because he took you no, down, no, no. And, I, you know, look, did the, in, the MMA in, thing. In the heart, I love. You know what I'm saying? I trained for it. I did what I had to do. But before the fight, they, they pulled him. I, we had everything. I had everything perfectly ready to go and do everything. But then they came in with some with some BS about paying me. And it kind of messed with my head a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So instead of doing what I was supposed to do, I went to fight to try to knock him out and get him out of there. And he took me down and, hey, it is what it is. Y'all you know, saw, saw the result. But you know what? We had, we had a two-fight deal. We were supposed to come back and do a boxing match two, a month later. But after the fight, he was, he, he was telling him to retire. That's bullshit. So you feel that maybe he ran scared of the agreement? Oh, he was, man, they, they, they were scared before the fight. They were, right. they were scared to death. They, and man, it was, they had a choice but to take me down. Because if he tried to stand with me, he would he have messed up real bad. I see, I see. And how do you feel a, a boxing match would have gone between you and Randy Couture? Oh, two rounds. No, one round. One rounder. Fair dues, fair yeah. dues. I want to get on to local and popular topics now. So I was, I've done a lot. I've, I've always done my research on all fighters, but yourself, you're obviously a very good friend. You're a good, good man, and I respect you immensely. Um, but I was, I always watch Joe Rogan. Always watch Joe Rogan's podcast, and I think he's very, very good. And shout out to, to, to Joe out there if you ever get to see this. Um, but he he mentioned that basically you were you were on Mexican supplements during your career. I just wanted to know what Ooh. your thought, Joe Rogan. The you know the Joe Rogan podcast. He said you were on Mexican I, I supplements. Heard, I about it, but, but what kind of, what kind of supplements? I don't know. I don't know which ones he said. I don't know why he'd be Mexican. And I wanted to know your thoughts. Now he's got immense respect for you as far as kind of being a fighter. You can clearly see that in many if of his he episodes. Respect, hey, if he had respect for me, he wouldn't be saying this stuff because I ain't never, I ain't, I all that I took in my whole life was I had a um I tore my bicep and tricep and put steroids in my arm. So I said, so the muscles can be healed. And I fought, I fought Ruiz, where I shouldn't have, but I didn't want the fight to get away from me. 
So I'm still fighting that's how I got caught with the drugs in my system. It's been, it, it's, been, it, it's been documented. I won my case. I took the court won. It is what it is. Okay. Any reason, any, any um, let's say, relationship between Mexican supplements? I mean, what, what, what's the I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't know. I, all day, I know I love it. I love Mexican. I love tamales. Mexican food. <laughs> Me too. I, I, well, I like it over here. Over here, when we have Mexican food, it's actually quite nice. Over in when I met, when I went to, to and I've commentated over in Texas and I've had Mexican food. It's horrible, absolutely horrible. Oh. No, anybody can. It's a completely, completely different thing. Um, again, respect to Joe Rogan, but I'm not quite sure what he means by Mexican. Obviously, you could think maybe the Mexican beef situation with Canelo, maybe. But I don't quite... know. But you know, like I said, that's past me. I don't even think about it. In my whole career, I fought clean. Besides that one time. And, I, and, it, and look, and then, and then about it, I told them the, the new commission before the fight that we 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 come we come out with surgery, so it's a known right then what it was about. Right, interesting stuff. Interesting. Now you're and really famous. It's written down. Oh. It's documented. It's true. I ain't one of my. I ain't. I ain't never one of my say I cheated in anything. And it was written down, documented, the hospital, yes. the, lot, the full job. Yeah. Yes. Right. So, how how did he clear you for the fight then? Uh, it didn't clear me for the fight because I had the fight. Everything came out. I see. I see. And it we went to a hearing, and everything was cool. Yeah. I see. Okay. Cool. Cool. What you're really famous for, James, and I, I think you're dead funny. I, I really do. Make sure you keep your comments coming in, guys, and make sure you like the video to to get this viral. One thing I really found funny is that you used to talk. Proper shit mid rounds. <laughs> you learn to be like, hey, come on, only, come on, I, champ. What? Tell me I about only, that. I only did that when they said they said with me. You know what I'm saying? They said okay. with me, they gonna get it. Yeah, that's all I know how to do. But see, but this is you can't come to me and talk shit and expect not to get it back to back at you higher or twice. I'm gonna get you regardless. Okay, so that was only in response, like in a, a retaliation. Always. Uh, okay. Remember, you rep what you sold. I like it. One thing I was interested in, I don't know anything about this, but you sparred with Mickey Rourke, didn't you? The actor. Yeah, he, yeah. Right. We, 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 we were fighting back in the day. We, we was trying to fight back in the day. When we were we, we, we all the middleweight, he won the box. And he just, you know, he made his little five fight career. You know, like, we got we got to inspire one day and one day it was pretty bad for him. Yeah, and I want to learn more about this. So I hear rumors of once you had sparring with him, he had to have surgery for that. What what was yeah. the resemblance? What what was what was that about? Because he, I fell for a joke. That, I fell for my own joke, right? He, he told me to look down, and we boxing the he, short time. I looked down, and, and luckily my, my reference was so good, I stood back. And by him with my hand up to it. I broke his I broke his face and I broke his cheek on his nose. Wow. Okay. So that's the reason for the surgery. I can completely understand that. I want to go on to back in the day, Ben and Eubank. Obviously, Ben and Eubank were big, oh. big, big names here in the UK, of course, also across the world. Um, how do you feel that you would have done, and I'm gonna ask you separately, against Chris Eubank? Two rounds. Stopped him in two, yeah. Two. Okay. How would you feel you did it against Nigel Ben? First round. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's your wife. He, yeah. He, he tries to be. He tries to be aggressive. And I love. I love fighting aggressive fighters. I love that. Come to me. Come, hey, come get your whooping. <laughs> okay. So you'd much prefer someone come at you so you can slip them and counter them rather than you doing the you doing the fighting. If, if, if she fighting you, make you make scary. He a scary dude. He don't try to go out. She goes to bring out bring, bring a couple jabs here and there, jab combinations, buy shots. I know, I, I know when, when, when people were fighting him, it was not going to his body. So I, I know, I said, I, I, I was watching. Absolutely. 
you did say something quite funny. I'll be honest. Um, is you, you did say that uh, that you would um, have something something on the lines of uh, smack Chris Eubanks' mum's ass, um, which I no. thought was quite... <laughs> I, I said I'll beat the ass. Okay, okay, okay. I just thought you meant this in like you know, yeah, no, wrong thing, awkward. Why well, would you beat know, his mum's ass? What's his mum done wrong? Because she ain't she ain't she, she ain't teach him how to be courteous and fight him and, and keep his word. This keep is your word, great... baby. If you, if you say you won't fight me, you, you sign the contract, you sign for a tournament, stay in the tournament. Don't be no coward. I like it. Great question here, by the way. This huge question. How would you have done, James? And how would you have got on with marvelous Marvin Hagler? Well, uh, that's uh, a that's a dream fight because you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. We, we have the same mindset. We trying to keep. We uh, we uh, we, uh, we want we want a war. But I'm telling you right now, I don't think I'm knocking him out late. Okay, you're not gonna you're not gonna have her out late. That's a hell of a statement. Late. He was an incredible champion. Great, hey, great champion. Just like, just like I was, great champion. But you know what? I hey, I'm a man. You know he is. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I know, I know what I can do. Uh, I know what my, I know what my, what my mind's right, my body's right. Ain't nobody beat me, period. I've already proven it time and time again. I like it. I see you, James. For me, honestly, I see you as. I'm not joking. I see you as one of the best to put on a pair of gloves. Period. Thank you know, you are you. an incredible fighter, great friend, great champion. And they say, great father. I love that. That's a measure of a man for me. But Roy Jones Jr. doesn't see it that way. Roy Jones Jr. I saw in a, in a recent interview said that he was legendary, but you weren't. What's your response to that? He said it recently about me. Apparently. I, I watched it in a, an interview, yeah. Well, 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 well. So he was a was great. Shocked. Of course, he beat you. He basically he beat a, he beat a James Turner that was not in shape. He beat a James Turner who was not motivated. I gave I I gave him the opportunity, but I didn't have to give him opportunity. And then and I hear and I hear him saying that shit. And look, I I try to be nice to this dude. We got Roy Jones. He's a scary dude, a scary fighter. You see how he fought um, how he fought Mike Tyson? He was scared to death. I mean, scared to death. I, I mean, I'll be honest, James. I think I'd be pretty scared to death myself, mate, if I was fighting Mike Tyson. Well, how, was, how would you have dealt with Mike Tyson? Hey, is it a I'm, similar, similar uh, kind James of thing Tony, of Nigel Ben? James Tony is James Tony. I'll find my, I will beat him the same way I beat Holyfield. Easier. Saying a real talk. You did my, mention that my, you my, like people coming my, to my you. Great, but James Tony is the best player, period. I like it. I mean, I've, I've, listen, I think you're an incredible fighter. There's absolutely no... I know you weren't... Look, you know, uh, let's say the preparation wasn't great for Jones. Look how bad I've Holyfield. I mean, he struggled with, with Holyfield. He struggled. I beat the brace off his ass. Agreed with that. Agreed with that. Make sure you keep your comments coming in, everybody. I want to see it. James, you did say um, that Joshua would beat Wilder. Do you think that that is still the case? Or do you think Wilder will put an all in his head? I think right now, we're thinking, looking, looking, Wilder is going to knock out jo Joshua because Joshua he won't fight. He was, he's, he, he's the one of the fame and, and the money. He wouldn't try to be heavyweight champion forever like like me. That's it. Uh, do you feel that, you know, that this this drop in confidence clearly with with Joshua is the, is the real reason? That he's he's not the monster that he was, and nobody can ever deny that. And I'm not the biggest he fan. Wasn't of Joshua. Look, one, no. He wasn't a monster. He wasn't a monster. He wasn't a monster. He 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 was a fighter. He 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 he, yeah, he in the wrong. He's in the right era. If he was in my era uh, in the seventies and eighties and nineties, oh yeah, he, 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 he would have hear him. He would destroy it quickly. He's garbage. I mean, listen. Calling him gar garbage, of course, is is up to whoever calls him that. I mean, listen, he's, he trains, he's, he he fights well. For me, I'm not the biggest fan because of a few separate issues, um, and I'm not certainly not going to go into him ever again. But what I will say is, you're right, you are right. 
You know, if he was if he was in there with the Razor Ruddocks and the even the Frank Brunos of that time, then he may have come up short, in my opinion. And if, that's certainly not certainly not going back to the time when he had the Sonny Listons and the the Muhammad Ali's and the Joe Frazier's and the George Foreman, Ernie Shavers, all Rocky Marciano, way. Ernie Shavers, Ernie Shavers. I mean, I don't Dear know if, ever, if you're watching on YouTube. I did. I recently did a. Um, uh, an interview with Larry Holmes, who's, who's one of the best fighters. I think you'd agree, James, of all time. Um, fantastic yep. guy. He, I was with him yesterday. Were you, oh, you were? You were? You, 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 yeah, I saw. I saw. Um, he's a great guy, really is. And he blames, if you haven't seen it, make sure you go have a look on YouTube. He blames um, Muhammad Ali's, um, let's say, neurological issues to Ernie Shavers. Ernie Shavers being one of the biggest um, punchers for me of all time. It really it is. Could be. It Absolutely. Could be. James. I'm just, I'm just about to bring on a, a, another top prospect in, in Macaulay Owen. Macaulay's a, a great guy. He's, he's 5-0, and and I, I really respect Macaulay because he's 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 going to be fighting next Saturday um, on the uh, Nathan Heaney against Jack Flatley undercard over in Telford. I'll be going over there myself. Um, and he's, he's he's knackered, bless him. He's, he's so tired. I don't know, I'm going to bring him on in just a second. What advice would you give to Macaulay is literally one of the best fighters ever to walk the earth. I mean, what advice would you give to McCauley? In fact, do you know what? In fact, stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Let's do it here. McCauley, how are you doing? You okay, mate? What up, mate? Uh, yes. you okay? What advice have you got to give? You obviously you give so much fantastic advice to Janae, James. Um, what advice have you got to give to, to McCauley? Hey, stay focused. Stay hungry. Stay focused. Stay hungry. Hey, always, always believe in yourself. Hey, trust me. Always, always stay in the gym. Always stay ready. Cause you, cause you never know when something, when something's gonna pop up. Absolutely. And, and most important thing, always believe in yourself. You, nobody else. Don't, don't, don't look for no actors for anybody else. Just yourself. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, James. James, I'm going to let you shoot, mate. I love you to bits, mate. Absolutely love you to bits. And Macaulay, I'll bring you on ever so shortly. Um, I just want to say from my end, James, I'm genuinely a fantastic fighter. Proud to call you a friend. All the best to Junior. And uh, thanks for coming on the show, mate. All right. Thanks, baby. Love you, boy. Love you, brother. Take care. I love England. Hey, I love me, James. See you soon. Stay tuned, I'll be back in a sec. What a legend. I mean, you don't get much more legendary than James Lights Out Tony. And some of the advice that he's given to um, Junaid um, today and some of the advice on, on his defense and things like that is it's, it's incredible. It's just to sit there and facilitate, you know, and help potentially the future future world of boxing in Britain is absolutely amazing. But so I'm going to be bringing on now a, a very very special fighter for me. Um, he's a tell another Telford boy. We had obviously Liam Davis on the other day. He was another Telford boy, and he's done so well. And this is the the next big Telford star. Um, check him out. He's a he's a good. Boy. <laughs> Macaulay, are you getting on, mate? You're well. Yeah, real good. Thanks. Thank you. So, I'm very well, mate. Even better for good, seeing man. you. Even better for seeing yeah, you, mate. Yeah. Honestly, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna give give him the opportunity to at least let him say something to you. I mean, you are a fantastic fighter. There's no doubt about it. I'm really looking forward to being there um, and and seeing you in the flesh. Um, on um, on the 25th of March, next Saturday. First of all, I'm going to ask you the horrible question that you always get asked at press conferences, which I don't like going to because it's just crap. And not only that, you ate it, all the others ate it because everybody's asking you the same questions. But genuinely, I was I was camped on. Yeah, no, it's, it's gone really well, to be honest. Uh, yeah. yeah, we've been yeah real strategic about this time. <clears throat> I mean, it worked, worked hard when we got to and, you know, eased off the gas as well when we got to as well. So that's gone really Fantastic. well. A massive respect for coming on the show because, of course, you're fighting literally next Saturday. So, uh, massive respect. So, I'll fly through it with you. I want to learn a little, little bit about you first of all. So, you were very good amateur, uh, but I want to learn, you know, what got, what got you into boxing? What kind of started this whole uh, journey from Macaulay Owen? Yeah, I was a bit of a bit of a naughty kid as such, a bit of a mischievous kid at school and that. Um, I used to love to, you know, get myself into a bit of a fight. Uh, yeah, playing up a lot, so I had a lot of energy to waste. 
a lot of energy to use up, obviously put into the wrong things. And then eventually got, obviously, asked, asked to leave the one school and my parents decided to finally let me, I went to box for years, so obviously just went to fight, not realising boxing is, is what it is, like it's an art, it's a, it's a, it's a like, great sport. Um, well, you're not going to have uh, much energy left when you've been boxing, though, I guess. <laughs> you picked yeah, the right well, thing. So that's why I did it. Yeah, obviously put put my energy into that, and uh, ever since that day, just never looked back. Fantastic. So tell us about your kind of your amateur achievements then, because I keep I've, I've done loads of research on you, and um, I've seen you a very good amateur. Tell us about kind of what you achieved in in the amateurs then. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, I won the won the nationals, won the one national, won two time Haringey, Haringey uh, Boxing Cup, obviously one of the biggest uh, box cups in Europe. Uh, won best best popular match for one year. Uh, won university boxing championships. Uh, won that twice. Uh, yeah, boxed, boxed a couple of international competitions in like Ukraine, Ireland, um, Canada. So yeah, but been about a bit. Incredible. And I want to bring you back to the start of really your um, your career. So of course you got signed by Frank Warren, um, which is a dream for for many yeah. many fighters. What was your reaction when you know? you you got told or you knew that you were going to be represented by Frank Warren? Yeah, it was, uh, over the moon. I, it, it was quality. Um, I'm very, very proud to, to be able to say I've signed on for Frank Warren from day one. Uh, a lot of boxers have to, you know, go a few few years through the small hole route and uh, really build their craft that way. But like, thankfully, I'm lucky enough to be in a position where I was signed from day one and I've been on these shows from day one and I'll, I'll, that's where I've built my boxing base. Incredible. Just do me a favour. Just watch your finger because it's it's coming in. I can't see you. <laughs> it's just going, going. No, it's all right. I just don't want to see you like that. <laughs> no, it's all good, mate. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so, there's, there's, like I say, Telford. I mean, there's a massive boxing boom in Telford now. You and Liam Davis um, are, are bringing the bacon to, to Telford right now. So, what's, why is this boom coming from Telford? Is it purely coincidental or what, what, what's the reason for it? I don't know, like the, the international centre is the place to be now, isn't it, for these shows? Um, yeah, I, I mean, that's a show. Me and Liam was in the same gym. Uh, I've done it over at Donington Boxing Club for years. Um, and they feel like, it, like it, it's working alongside someone like Liam. Like, you, you know, you both push each other, you both achieve, and you just want to go on to push and push for bigger and better things. There are a few boxes coming through from Telford now as well. Right. Um, and I, do feel, I, feel, I feel like just being surrounded by each other, seeing each other doing well. Uh, it's, it's almost it's just how, how the competition is, isn't it? Uh, Liam's pushing on to be a British, uh, you got the British and European. So, I mean, like, I, I want to do one better, or like, I want to be the biggest name from Telford. So, it's just how the competition like to see, see you can do the yeah. best. Iron sharpens iron, kind of thing. I'm, I'm with you. That's I'm it. with you. I mean, just to go to some of the uh, the fans here, let's have a look. We've got Chris Harper who said Tel Telford Boxing Revival. Um, yeah, we've got the other. Richie Woodall's coming here, yeah. loving it. Yeah. We've got one from Bulldog Boxing Club. Shout out to them over in, uh, on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe to the notification bell if you're over there. Thanks for your comment, mate. Much appreciated. Um, we've got, um, let's have a quick look here. That was fantastic listening to James offering advice to McCall. Yeah, proper, proper. Love that. Absolutely love that. Um, who else have we got? We've got Chris Groves wishing McCauley the best of luck. Cool. Thank um, you. Cheers. Paul Humphreys, best of luck this weekend, mate. Seeing you fight a few times now, um, and you have a massive future. Ridiculously educated jab. Okay, nice to see a bit of boxing brain come in there. Uh, this made me laugh. I read this, and I thought, I've got to tell him. I detect a touch of Irish accent in your voice, Owen. Sorry if not, but if so, where does that come from? All the best in your career, Owen, and stay safe. The funny thing, <laughs> the funny. And by the way, McCauley, just to be clear, I have not spoke to Leslie about this, okay? I thought when I was watching that video that you looked a bit like Cole Frampton. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that, you said that, did you? Yeah. Something Frampton about you. And you were like, no, it was the first time. Are you, have you got any Irish yeah. in you? Or is he just... Uh, no, nah, no. Nah, yeah, nah. Okay. Nah. <laughs> How coincidental is that? I love yeah, that. Yeah, I've never heard it before neither. So it's just the name McCauley people get mixed up and nah, no, nothing. Brilliant. Um, it's always been great for boxers, Liam Davis. Obviously, yeah, brilliant. He's a... Very, very, very good fighter, no doubt about it. So you're fighting Christian Lopez Flores um, on the March the 25th, the Mexican, always tricky, always game. Uh, what do you know about him? Yeah, not a lot, to be honest. Like the, the, that, that detail you've given me there is pretty much what, what I know. Uh, I know his game, I know he comes on strong, so he, he's going to try and be there the, the far way through. Um, yeah. yeah. The only issue is, though, 
this does not a lot. They've seen it time and time again, haven't we, Macaulay? See, time and time again, when you get some of these South Americans, Argentinians, Mexicans particularly, there's not a lot on them. It can bring a lot more danger than you realise. So you're you prepared for that? Yeah, it's with boxing, isn't it, mate? Like, it's, it, it, ain't, it ain't safe out there. Like, it doesn't matter who you're boxing. These, these Mexicans, Argentinians, no matter what, like, it's a dangerous sport. So, you know, that's why we get ourselves in the best shape in the gym. Make sure we do what we do, like, day in, day out, stick with it. You know, and like uh, all the same lady, believe in yourself, you know. But... Love it. I love it. So for you, so what's the what would you say is the plan then for you know 2023, 2024? What's the what's the plan for you? Yeah, I'm re- ready for the titles now. Like um, yeah, the, like let, let's get this one out of the way and then push on and uh, go like go the traditional route of mid and title next. Uh obviously the, the this fight's spot first and foremost for me, like my eyes are on this spot next this Saturday. Um, but yeah, I've got a strong guy for the titles now. I, I do feel like we're ready. Like the, the sparring we're getting, uh, all the work we're doing in the gym, uh, just it, it's written to be ready for the title. So we, we are pushing, pushing on fast. And... Absolutely love it, love it. Great stuff. I mean, listening to to someone like James Tony there talk about his career and all these amazing things that he's done, and you know UFC and and all that kind of stuff. Could you ever see yourself? been involved in in anything like that you know maybe in the future or can you ever see that happening the ufc anything you see all this influencer stuff and all this you know ufc and wrestling and, and just everything i mean can, can you see yourself in it listen if any of them want it they can get it like show me the pay, show, show me that paycheck mate and i'll be there um <laughs> Yeah, honestly, mate. Yeah, like it, 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 it's um, like it's good for boxing because it's bringing a new audience to it. Don't get me wrong, but someone was making a mockery of it, like so. It won't be bad to turn out a couple of them. What are you saying about this? Um, what's it called now? That stupid drink. What is it now? Prime. Say prime. prime. Yeah, <laughs> prime. What, mate? <clears throat> what's that about? Anyway, I'm not being funny. I went to the shop the other day, and I just thought, John, I'm just going to ask. How much it is? Just, just, just ask them. Do you know what I mean? Ten quid. Ten, ten. quid. Are you having a laugh, I, I, I'm, mate? I'm going Norway, Norway, and some <laughs> mad six star resort with like the best service you can ever imagine for ten quid a beer. Do you know what I mean? I ain't yeah. going no smelly yeah. prime. No disrespect to KSI, but really horrible. Yeah. Anyway. I'm being proud. I don't, I don't know anything about it. To be honest, I've just seen the kids running around a bit like screaming, dead excited down the street. That's all I've seen. It just shows, though, doesn't it? Like the the let's say influence. Do you know what I mean? That that they've got like the social media guys over. Like, there, there, was those, there was well, one of those misfit shows in Telford the other day, wasn't it? That, that was a sellout. I think I heard. Was um, it? Yeah, it's entertaining, isn't it? I think they were doing like tag team, tag team boxing matches or something like that. To be so, fair, listen, knows, yeah. Credit where credit's due. As long as they stay in their their line, I'd love have a go with that, wouldn't you? Be meant to, oh, yeah. It's like Should bang someone out. Then the other one comes up. Bam, bam. Be very wicked. Go it wouldn't be fun. Though. Listen, yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind that misfits really because it's not pretending to be. Pro- do you know what I mean? It's not pretending yeah. to be professional or anything like that. So. I don't really mind it, but the tag team thing, I don't know something about that. I quite like it. I think it's quite good. Do you fancy have a team up? Yeah. I'm like yeah, you, but I basically, know. if I, I'm like you, but if you at you, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I look like you're we'll go, or yeah. something. Yeah. I like it. What are we going to call it? What are we going to call ourselves tag team? Got any names? No, nah, mate. It's, it's what colour have you yeah, got? Me? Yeah. I'm gonna say blonde. I'm gonna say strawberry blonde. Well, I'm a ginger, no. There you so we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to go with that. The ginger ninjas. Let's go with that. No, no, I, I, oh, no that's, all you, that's all you, yeah, mate. That's all you, mate. That's all you. I enjoyed it anyway. But I love that. Get KSI. Bam, bang. And the Logan comes in. Whack, whack, whack. I meant like that. Anyway, it sounds fun. So Richie Woodall, of course, is from Telford. Richie Woodall is a fantastic fighter. I mean, do you look up to him? Is he like a big part of of boxing in Telford? Yeah, he's a, definitely a legend of the game, isn't he? Uh, what he does now, like up, the, up at GB and the commentary work he does, you know, he, he's keeping his face in there and doing a very, very good thing for boxing. Uh, yeah, he's a pro, pro this helper for, um, for for boxing, really, isn't he? He, he, he was he wasn't the boxing in his helper, then now it's just Liam's coming through and myself 
coming through, you know, take, try, try and yeah. not take over. We're nothing I'll say that way from Richie, but yeah, we're next. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some big clashes. Um, there's some big domestic clashes, the likes of Kikache, um, Zelfa Barrett. Uh, there's some b- bigger fights there. I mean, can you see any of these happening anytime soon? Well, yeah, we'll take our time. I mean, we've got we've got plenty of time, plenty of fights available coming up. So, um, but like, I'm definitely not ruling them out. Like that, 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 that's where my eyes are. Like, I want to be up there at the top. I got asked a, same, a similar question I answered the other day. I like, started listening off the, these big names, and like, oh, I'm very humble. I'm, I'm very respectful, but like, if I wasn't looking at them lads, like, I wouldn't be in the game. That's where I want to get. So, when those fights come, I'll be ready. Any of them. Good lad. Good lad. Uh, we've got some, um, so, you know, let's have a look at, we should be called the Redskins as a tag team, me and you, apparently. Or... They're just names coming in <laughs> <Well, it's... laughs> Or the Red Death. Red Death. Red Death. Like Sabbath or something. Yeah, I like that. Like... Amazing. Well, listen, I know you've got your fight next Saturday. I'm not going to keep you any longer. I, I just really want to say from my end, you know, I appreciate um, you sticking with, you know, your guns and you know, true to your work, coming on the show and saying hi. Looking forward to helping to publicize and helping to support um, the, the fans of our master. We've got something like 215,000 followers over um, on Facebook, and I'll be absolutely making sure that we, we advocate and we, we push, you know, positive Definitely. vibes your way, mate. So, listen, thanks for coming on the show, and um, I'll let you go sleep. Uh, thanks a lot for having me on. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Bless <laughs> you. No, I'll see you if, yeah. if I see you next uh, next Saturday. I'll give you a shout. You take care, mate. Nice one, mate. Thanks a lot for your time. See you later. All the best, mate. Bye. Right. What a lovely lad fighting literally next Saturday. Um, so yeah, make sure you keep all your comments coming in. I've, we've got some crazy countries coming in um, today. So great to see um, the Redskins. I'm loving that. I'd love to be able to do that tag team thing. I don't know about anybody else. So I'm going to be bringing on my next guest now. And, and my next guest is, again, equally um, one of Britain's best talents um, to come through right now. Literally, to come. he was going to come on the show last week and we couldn't have him on because he was at the awards um, for British boxing. So this, it, this guy, you may have seen on the Matchroom shows. Um, he signed with Eddie Hearn. Uh, his name's Janaid Bostan. And this kid is very, 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 very talented. Um, have a watch of him because I'm crap at these bags and he's brilliant. Watch this. Mate, you're pretty good. Give you that. Thank you very much, Dan. I appreciate um, it. And thank you I don't for even know how you do them. Hey, listen. I, I, I found that so lovely. And, and what, what Janaid's talking about, by, by the way, welcome to the show, Janaid. Um, it was pretty amazing. Now, we earlier on today, we had James Tony, of course, one of the best fighters ever to walk the planet, and Janaid. And Janaid, I said to Janaid, by all means, come on 15, 20 minutes earlier and just get some some advice from, from James Tony. And do you know what? It was, it was lovely just to sit there and listening to him talk. And, you know, you never know something what you said there, Janaid, might, do you know what I mean, help you to to be the best fighter you can be. Do you know what I mean? And it amazing to see. Amazing to see. Yeah, My pleasure. It's good. it's good learning from someone like, like the likes of James Tony. And, man, what, when you type in defensive highlights, he's one of the first few that comes up. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. I literally, when, when you messaged me the night before, I was watching his fight against Ira Barkley when he went up to 168. So, it was literally, like, very ironic how it all happened. But... It was a good. It was an honour to be speaking to him. Thank you again, Dan. No, mate. Always my pleasure, buddy. Always my pleasure. So, I just want to introduce you, Janae Bostan. So talented. This kid is going literally all the way. And when I say kid, I mean, what are you twenty two now? Did you say twenty one, twenty two? No, I, t- I turned twenty one last month. So, yeah, I've only been pro a year now. So, yeah, <clears throat> unbelievable though. I mean, five wins, yeah. five knockouts. I mean, you are going far. Um, there's yeah. no doubt about yeah. it. There really, really isn't. Loads and loads of love coming in. So thanks for everybody and all your comments. Make sure you keep them coming in. So I want you to tell me a little bit. I want to ed- you educate me as well. Of course, I've done my research. I'm, I don't just jump into yeah. this. Um, but, you know, kind of, I want you to educate me and, and, and I want to, want, to, want to get to know you a bit better. So yeah. tell us a little bit about you. Of course, you're mm-hmm. from Sheffield. That's where my family's yeah. from. So I knew straight away yeah. that I'd like you. But kind of, Tell us about where you're fighting out of. You know, who's training you? Give us an idea about mm. you. Um, I, I train at Still City Gym. Grant Smith, who just won Trainer of the Year 
He's my trainer. He's, he's been training me since I was 12 year old. I'm now 21. Um, he's trained me since an amateur. Won my first national title with him at 13, and then just boxed for England, went to the Europeans, and etc. I turned pro at 20, and I've been pro a year now. I've had five fights, five stoppages. I'm signed with Eddie Hearn and looking at titles this year. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And to ask that question there, then, so you're, of course, signed by Eddie Hearn. Um, yeah. And I'm going to ask you the same question I asked McCauley, because, of course, he's signed by Frank Warren, another yeah. one of the best promoters in the world. Yeah. But what was your reaction specifically, Janaid, when you've got Matchroom sending you letters or on the phone saying, I want you to come and fight for, for Matchroom? I mean, how did it make you feel? I mean, it's a privilege and it's an honour, obviously, having promoters as such as these interested in you know like it is it is good but at the same time you've got to remember it is business and obviously you've got to stick to what you know and i was very pleased to have such a good deal and i'm being very well looked after and i just got to make the most of these things now i don't let it get to my head i understand that it's a very good platform to be at but i've just got to make the most of these things while i'm on it one thing i noticed about you since i've started speaking to you is you're very very mature where's that yeah. come from i mean ugh. It depends who you speak to. I can be immature when I want to be. Do you know what I mean? Me too. Um, but uh, but I think it's more. I think it's more so for the people I've had around me. Obviously, you are the environment what you have around you. And growing up, I had a lot of elders around me. Do you know what I mean? A lot yeah. of pros. I've grown up around pros around a lot of elderly. I'm the youngest in the gym around the pros. So again, I'm always with an elder a lot. So I'm learning and growing with them. And. Okay. So when I'm in their steps or future reference, when I'm further on in my career, I've already half seen it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, keeps me grounded and humble. I like that. I like. I mean, when I was 21, mate, God, I was. I think I was just. I don't know. Just to pretend I've, I was sick, so I could have a week off work. Watch yeah. Simpsons. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? That, that's that's something else. I mean, that's that's fantastic. So I kind of your five fights in mm-hmm. with five knockouts. Yeah. Sounds good, that, doesn't it? <laughs> it does sound, don't get me wrong, I've looked into it a lot more forensically than that, as you can only expect, Junaid. Um, yeah. You know, some of the lads you fought have been stopped, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But still, you've still got to put these guys away. So five mm-hmm. wins, five knockouts is very, very impressive. Mm-hmm. No denying it. Is there? Yeah. I know you said to, to James a little bit earlier that, uh, you know, you don't feel that you are the biggest puncher in the world. and yeah. You feel it's more about time and things like that. Clearly, yeah. you can punch, though, mate. So, where does this come from? Was there anything particular you work on? I don't know, you know, because like I've said this previously in like press conferences and stuff. I don't, I weren't known as the biggest punch in the amateurs, and I feel like I'm, a, I'm always, I was a late developer. Like, I, I don't even think I've hit my man strength yet. I've only just started growing. Like, even from my debut of last year, I've grown so so much. Um, I just, like I said, I just, I just put it down to my time and my speed, and. Obviously, I can. I've been working a lot on my strength conditioning and the diet, especially the last six months, and that's played a massive part in it. So, like I said, I won't ever go into a fight thinking I'm a one punch knockout artist. However, it's good to know that I can dig, and I was going to a fight ready to perform for the set amount of rounds it's scheduled for. But it's good to get the cherry on the top, which is the stoppage or the knockout. I like it. Loads of love coming in, by the way. And this is one of the reasons I love doing this, so people can get to know you yeah. rather than just the gladiator in the ring. Let's have a yeah. look who's here. Yorkshire lad. There he is. Yeah, there, yes. there he is. Some love coming out from America, Linda. Um, again, Linda, legend in the game of boxing photography. She was there photographing the, the best yeah. you've ever had. Put gloves on, you wouldn't like the best. Um, she said you're mature and humble, uh, which is thank really, you, really Linda. Nice um, Dean Beddows, when I was 21, I was ahead the ball. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, uh, Neil depends Smith. what day you catch me on. <laughs> yeah. Depends what day yeah. you catch me on. I might seem like I'm normal, but no, <laughs> no, not really. Uh, very nice to, nice, humble young man. Good to listen to and polite young people. Linda mm-hmm. said, thank you. Thank you for, for saying hi. Lovely lady. Lovely lady. So, Obviously, you you said to me a little bit earlier on. You said to when we were speaking with James Tony, and this is just off the cuff, yeah. that you feel that your frame is going to get bigger. You've just uh-huh. turned twenty one, so you haven't yeah. got your man strength really yet. You know, no. so you feel that you can move through the rate through the weight. So even as far as up to one sixty eight, you're a light middleweight yeah. right now. From if yeah. I'm wrong. Um, for me, do you, because obviously you're five fights and five knockouts now. Do you feel that you can carry that power? up to the, the higher echelons of even the domestic sport? Definitely, why not? I've only, I've only just started getting hairs on my chin, let alone man strength, you know what I mean? Like I said, I'm a late developer, so 
I don't see why not. I've been sparring. I've been sparring high quality lads, domestic lads, and I know what I'm doing. And obviously sparring, sparring. However, I know I can do it much in in the fights. It's just a matter of showing it. I like. I have got a big mouth, but it's just being able to back it up. And I feel like in the non too distant future, I will be backing it up and I will showing it because I'm not really too keen on fighting gentlemen. In my in my opinion, I've only really fought one, and that was in my first fight, and I felt half embarrassed. The rest yeah. of them have been like either tough road warriors or even then every, every fight i've had since they've been they've had a winning record so like i said it's just it's just being able to show it when it comes and obviously i'll be ready for that love it so your name junaid bostan where does that yeah. where does the where does the bostan originate from because as, as far um, as i'm aware that's is that is it pretty sure is it from a further field nah, well my, my mother's english um my father's pakistani from what I know, Boston's quite is actually a Turkish name. I don't yeah. I don't really know. Yeah, so I don't I don't really know, but, but obviously um I like my second name. I like my first name. My first name actually means warrior fighter, so it's quite fitting, I think. They got my mum for naming it. <laughs> but, I actually did know yeah. what I'd like I say, when I say I do research on you, mate, I'm yeah. I do. I actually did know the meaning for Boston. I can't remember now. But it's I think it is something like a peaceful garden or something on the lines of that. Uh, something what, hey, tell you what, there's something in that warrior yeah. in a peaceful garden. Yeah, I'd rather be like a warrior that. in a peaceful garden than a garden on the battlefield. Something that's like why that, I yeah. said there's something in it. That's why I admit I was on the I'm with you, bro. I'm, yeah, with, yeah, you I'm with you there. I'm with you there. I'm with you there. So, you've been in there, and let's let's not just and I'm going to say this in the most respectful way, and I want you to think I am and know I am. Yeah, you're not just a kid who mm -hmm. hasn't grown up fully yet. And you're just banging people out because you're doing it by accident. You've also been in there with some of the best in the sport. You've sparred with some of the best in the sport. You've given very yeah. good accounts of yourself against some of the best in the sport. So I want to give you some credit here. So you sparred with you know Josh Kelly, Sam Eggington, some of and better. Yeah. How did you do against them? I know I'm not, I don't want to give too much away because I understand the process of sparring. Uh, yeah, but I've, how I've did not, you do? I've, I've not sparred Sam Eggington or Josh okay. Kelly. I've, I've, I've sparred David Avanesian in preparation for his fight. Ah, with, right, for Josh, uh, Josh Kelly. Kelly. And that My was apologies. Was, that's, that was when I was 17. So I was sparring Avanesian when I was 17. And I, I sparred him not too recently for his fight for Crawford, um, right. which was a privilege. So, yeah, I've sparred the likes of David Avanesian. Obviously, growing up, I sparred Sonia when I was smaller, Dalton Smith. Uh, Florian Marco, uh, Troy Williamson in preparation for his fight which, for Josh Kelly. I, I, honestly, the names just go off. I've spot Pat McCormack. I've spot everyone really. Like, like I said, I, I, I like sparring. It's my favourite part of training, and it's good to get the rounds. And it shows me where I'm at, and I know where I'm at, and I'm happy with it. It's just going to really get better. Well, I'm glad you, you gave me a better list there. Clearly, I had the yeah. wrong sources, but uh, I mean that yeah. that's unbelievable. Oh, Avanesian is is one, and you were 17. At this point, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was seventeen when I first sparred him. Yeah, and then I sparred him recently for his fight for Crawford. I mean, I've got to ask you that question, mate. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a bloody fame to claim, isn't it? Sparring yeah, yeah, yeah. Avanesian before he fights Terence Crawford, which is arguably, for me, probably top two pound for pound yeah. in the world uh, at the moment. I mean. Yeah. I, I'll question for you there then with, with Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford is very awkward. Mm -hmm. he, he, do, he does switch it, so I can understand the reason why he picked you. Yeah. Is, what other reason was it? Was it was it mainly the uh, the switch hitting that they chose you for the, the sparring? Or? I mean, obviously the similarities with myself and Crawford, obviously switch hitting and the fact that I can I can box long reach and also can have, I can have a little go. Um I feel like they know they get quality rounds with myself. And I think, obviously, with the machine, what having SCN is, I think he finds it hard getting sparring, but he got it with myself. And, yeah, that's why I consistently call him in. Even at 17, I was sparring him often. But it's, it's good. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a privilege, obviously. It's, a, it's quite a, a compliment, really, if anything, like the call in you in asking you to spar. It only gives you confidence. 100%. I mean, you've, you've mentioned some incredible... Names there, Dalton Smith, Avanesian, and a few others. In your opinion, so far, and there's absolutely no disrespect to anybody else. This is just purely based on on my my you know being curious. Who would you say was the best person that you've shared a ring with and thought, you know what, he's he's a level I want to be at. I mean, I don't know. I, I couldn't really say. I couldn't put a pinpoint anyone because they're all good in all different ways. 
like I wouldn't say my toughest ball would have been anyone, but they've been tough for a different reason or they've been more okay. intellectual for different reasons. So I wouldn't necessarily say that. However, they've all got their own qualities and if anything, it's good to pinpoint their qualities and try and use it for you. And if it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I like it. I like it. That's a great, great question because, of course, someone like uh, Dalton Smith may be completely different to Avanestian, for instance. Yeah, so definitely. I, get that. Definitely. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I like definitely. it. So what's the plan for you then? You're five and oh, five knockouts now. You've still got a plenty of plenty of growing room. I mean, there's no yeah. reason to rush you really. You're still very, very young. But what is yeah. the plan for you in twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four? I mean, there's no need to rush, but if you're ready, you're ready. And I believe I have got the beating of these guys. I'd like I'd like to do it the traditional way, win the central area, just to just so I know I've won it. It's like a lot of people yeah. I know Tyson Fury is one person who's won every battle. But he's not won the central area or his like his area title. I know yeah. it's bugging a little. So I'd love to win that. <laughs> win the English. I'd love to have the English by end of this year, early next year. Um, I don't see why not. And it's got progress through that way. And obviously just win all the titles and get up to world glory and get all the money with it. I like it. So you want to do everyone. So area, English, British, Commonwealth, well sorry, Commonwealth, British, all the way through European. Is that what you want to do ideally? Well, I don't see why not. I mean, I'm young enough. I've got time. And if I've got the opportunity to do so, then I'll take them. Well, if you need a sponsor for for your trophy cabinet, of all them belts, give me a shout. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's yeah, unreal, yeah. unreal, <laughs> mate. Honestly, I just want to say from my end, you know, a, a massive thank you for coming on the show. You, you're clearly, and some of the love coming in for you, EMA, mate. Honestly, is is brilliant. You, and I say this because I'm like, I can say it, but you know, you're getting a lot of love here. I mean, look here, wise head on on young young shoulders, Dean Pedos, great show again. Oh, cheers, mate. I mind me, but let's look at great lad, Janaid. Um, let's have a quick look here. Hi, Janaid, liking the level headedness, which is just as strong as any big punch like that. All the best, Janae. Keep Thank working you. hard. Listen even harder and have no regrets and keep safe. Brilliant. And this Thank is, uh, yeah, loads of love coming in here. Um, I love that. Yeah. Uh, where can we find you on on social media and, and where, where can we follow you? Well, my Facebook's my name, Janae Bostan, J U N A R D B O S T A N. Uh, my Insta and my Twitter is J D B O S T A N, J D Bostan. So, yeah, follow the journey. It's going to be a good one. Mate, I'm really looking forward to following it. You'll have my support, just like I said with Macaulay. There's a lot of us here. Um, and yeah. I just want to say for, from our end, mate, you are going to be, just like Macaulay, one of our stars for the future. So thanks a lot. And I can't wait to follow your journey, mate. God willing. Thank you, Dan. And again, thank you for earlier. I do appreciate it. Pleasure's all mine. Pleasure's all mine. No, Cheers, Janine. So, thank you. Look after yourself. What a lad. I have some great guests on today, aren't I? Some great guests on. Bless you. Um, I did mention a little bit earlier, um, I've got a, a winner. So I'm going to give everybody the last chance now. If you haven't already liked and you haven't already shared, make sure you do it right now to a page. I don't care what it is. Personal boxing page. Don't really care. Do it anyway. Um, and I'm going to be picking. And make sure you type in shared so I know you've done it. Um, Neil Smith, top lad, mate. Appreciate that. Little things like this. I, I'm, and I say this quite often. I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite open. I, I'd like to think I'm a real man's man. I'm open, I don't care if I cry, not bothered. If I think of, you know, I appreciate people, I'll tell you I appreciate you. And I'm damn right, if I've got five quid in my account and I've, I need it, you need it more, I'll be giving it you. So when I say these things, I really, really appreciate it. So thank you for, for all your uh, comments coming in. Dylan, uh, great show, Dan. I was lucky enough to share the ring with Macaulay a long time ago. Oh, fantastic. And Dylan, is uh, him and his family are incredible people. A lot, a lot of love for them. And uh, Neil Smith said he shared. <laughs> Good, there you go. He's, he's in with the chance of winning uh, a little bit later. I'm going to chuck out uh, a conversation just before I let you go um, this time that I want to, I want to chuck out there. I want to chuck out there to you guys so you can, you can tell me what you think. And it's something I put on here a while ago. Um, will Joshua be champion again? It's just, it's stuck in my head for ages. It, honestly, it's it's really stuck in my head for ages. Is Joshua going to be champion again? And of course, there's always a path when you can be a champion again. And I want want you to keep your comments coming in here. Make sure you're pressing shared if you've shared it. I don't know, you know. I don't know. You've got to think who he's got to beat. So first of all, he's got to beat the likes of Tyson Fury, which, in my opinion, he's never, ever, ever going to beat. I just don't see it happening. Never. Stoppage with Fury, in my opinion. Is he going to beat Wilder if he manages to get to a world title again? No, I don't think he is. I think he's too strong. And I feel that Wilder would put Joshua away. 
Um, Dean, no, uh, he's saying it. Um, Leslie, no, only a Fury. Let's have a quick look here. Only a Fury or Usyk vacated title. I completely agree. I, I just don't see it happening. And I'm always for the, for my, my sport. I'm always for my, the, my domestic sport. Um, but I just don't see it happening again. Something's happened. Something's happened deep in there that it's affected his confidence. Now, whether that is from um, what's happened with the Vladimir Klitschko knockdown or the Andy Ruiz st um, stoppage. I just can't see it happening. I, I, I just can't see it happening. Linda, again, she doesn't believe he is. I wish him all the best. I really, really do. And I wish him all the best in the luck in the world. I just don't see it happening. Um, but anyway, for, for me, I just want to say, honestly, always, thank you for following the content. Thank. I always ask myself, you know, is this something I'm doing? I'm, I'm never going to stop doing it now. We went on to TV. And it was brilliant. 48 shows, 45 minutes long per show. I was knackered. And I miss this. I miss talking to you guys every single week. I miss show, bringing the fighters to the fans, which is the slogan of boxing TV in general. So I just want to say really from, from my end, a, a massive thank you for watching the show. A big shout out to our partners, Global Elite. Um, if you were looking at buying or renting or a sports car, a yacht, um, Anything at all, make sure you get in touch. Um, Assassin Boxing Promotions and Management up in Aberdeen. Uh, the Lions Den Boxing Club over in Nottingham. And, of course, a new partner, Mitra's Automotive. So thank you for, for watching. Thanks for joining. Check them all out. And like I say, every week, you know, stay safe. Stick into your boxing. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Take care, guys.